Ah, the sea. So fascinating. So beautiful. With its deep blue waters, white sandy beaches, and most important of all, the ladies! <whistles> ladies and gents, today I present the fourth episode of my Lynx Love series. In this video, we'll analyze Link's best potential ships for The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, and also Spirit Tracks, even though that game takes place a century later with a different hero. Without further ado, let's begin! I'm your host Andy, and welcome to Zelda. Like normal, we'll start this list with some of the less serious potential ships, beginning with Maggie. She's one of the girls from Windfall Island who is captured by the Helmarok King. The Nintendo Gallery and Wind Waker states that Maggie's favorite things are love and romance, then follows up by saying she's quite popular with all the boys, but she prefers wild boys over all others. Given the personality of the Hero of Winds, I think this eliminates the possibility for her interest in Link. And even though she's apparently popular according to this entry, there's nothing that even suggests Link's interest. Besides, this girl is madly infatuated with a moblin, so I hope Link can do much better than this crazy girl. The next candidate to analyze is also from Windfall Island and was captured by that dang bird, Mila. Since her family was filthy rich, Tetra's pirates demanded a large payment for safely returning Mila from the Forsaken Fortress, causing her family to go from riches to rags. During a side quest, Link catches Mila red-handed trying to steal from the safe at Tsunari's shop. She explains to Link how her life has changed, but after talking with Link, she decides not to let her poverty control her actions, and thanks Link. This is really the only interaction the two have, so there's not even a hint of romance here. She's only even on the list for those diehard shippers who just want some sort of non-mainstream ship. Another potential but odd ship is with the Queen of Fairies, who Link encounters at the Mother and Child Islands. In my opinion, this encounter is actually fairly disturbing, but the seemingly young queen expresses her liking for Link through lines such as, Young one, I like you. And, I must tell you, you were just my type. Pretty creepy if you ask me, but hey, I gotta at least mention it for this list. Medley is a surprisingly fan-favorite ship, despite her being a Rito. To be fair though, the Rito and Wind Waker are nothing like they are on Breath of the Wild. In this game, they're basically just people with wings and beaks. And even then, those aren't even beaks. Beaks include the mouth, not just the nose. Nintendo, what were you thinking when you made these designs? Anyways, the point is that Medley and Link become friends over the course of the game. They meet and interact quite a bit when Link first goes to Dragon Roost Island, then towards the end of the game, she awakens as the Sage of Earth, and she traverses through the Earth Temple with Link. Despite Medley being somewhat popular among fans, it seems unlikely that her relationship with Link would ever go beyond platonic. In fact, she seems to have a thing for Prince Kamali. Medley says to Link that Prince Kamali has turned into quite a fine young adult, and that watching him grow up fills her with pride, then acknowledges how weird she must sound and giggles. Whether the two will actually become a pair still may not be certain, but it seems a lot more likely than the Medley and Link ship. Finally, our last ship to analyze for the Hero of Winds is Tetra. When Link and Tetra first meet on Outside Island, she is very resistant to letting Link travel with them so he can go save Errol, but eventually grows fond of Link. When Tetra and her crew are robbing the bomb shop on Windfall Island, she shows more concern over the well-being of Link's home, Outside Island, rather than the treasure they're pursuing. Mako tries to call her out on this, and Tetra replies by saying, Don't be ridiculous. I want, you know, the treasure. She then looks up, and she spots Link who quickly hides. Tetra then smiles and winks, making what she really wants all too clear. These nuts! Ha! <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, there are some more hints that suggest a possible romantic bond between these two. After awakening as Zelda, she tells Link to be careful when he leaves to reawaken the Master Sword, which means she now cares about Link's well-being. Later, Ganondorf also says that he has taken your precious Zelda. Since he uses the word precious, this implies that Zelda, aka Tetra, is precious to Link. Finally, after the credits of Wind Waker, there are bubbles showing Link's and Tetra's faces slowly floating to the top of the screen, with Tetra giving her wink and looking up at Link. 
Their relationship definitely has some potential to become something, but even though Tetra is the strongest ship for Wind Waker, odds are they're still just friends. Unfortunately, Phantom Hourglass doesn't really offer us any good shipping material either. The only thing that could have some meaning is after Link completes the first phase of the Bellum boss battle, when the curse on Tetra is lifted. Tetra thanks Link and reports that she saw everything. The two reach out for each other, but then Bellum appears again. It looks like they were going to hold hands, but then again, that would be kind of a weird position for romantic handholding. Link and Tetra do seem to be even closer based on their few interactions in Phantom Hourglass, but like I said, we still don't have anything to prove their relationship isn't platonic. All we know is that they do become close. If we have to pick a ship for the Hero of Winds, it would have to be Tetra. But if they did end up together, that may make things weird for the next story of Link and Zelda, which will take place a hundred years later in Spirit Tracks. If you're enjoying the video so far, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos about Zelda lore and analysis. If you'd also like to support my content as well as gain some channel perks, please consider signing up for my YouTube memberships. These perks contain getting your name shown at the end of each of my videos, early access to new uploads, voting on a video topic every two months, and even a monthly game night with me and the other members. If interested, click that join button on the channel's homepage or the link in the description for more information. My fellow Spirit Tracks fans know that there's really only one valid ship in this game, Zelda. In this game, there are many hints suggesting a romance between Link and Zelda from the very beginning. When the two meet for the first time during Link's award ceremony, Link clumsily looks up at Zelda and blushes. In most cases where males blush, it's because they're nervous being around an attractive female. After Link is shown blushing, the camera jumps to a shot of the two awkwardly smiling at each other before Chancellor Cole snaps them out of it. Right away, this is a good indication that there is mutual attraction. What's also interesting is that without even knowing anything about Link other than he's the new train engineer, Zelda sneaks him a letter during the ceremony trying to get his help. Why would she trust Link with sneaking her out of the castle to visit the Tower of Spirits if it was so urgent? It's possible she was using the mission as a way to get to know Link, but it's also at least as likely that she was just desperate for answers regarding the Spirit Tracks, so let's move on and look for the other things that can strengthen the Spirit Tracks Zelda in Link's ship. After the ceremony, Link can talk to one of the guards blocking the way to Zelda's quarters, who will mention that he noticed Zelda slipping him a letter during the ceremony, then he asks if it was a love letter. This doesn't really prove anything, but it could be the developer's way of hinting at a romance between Link and Zelda. When Cole separates Zelda's spirit from her body, Link is the only person who can see Zelda's spirit other than the locomos and villains. This shows there is some force of fate at play. She even entrusts Link with the spirit flute, her family heirloom, which goes to show how much she trusts Link. Not that she has much choice but also makes this relationship stand out from all the other games, is that in Spirit Tracks, Zelda is by Link's side for the entire journey and even fights alongside him in a few cases. Because the two get along so well and spend practically every moment of their adventure together, Link and Zelda quickly develop a very close bond. Like always, we can argue that this bond could just mean that they become very close friends, nothing more, but Spirit Tracks still has more content to offer. After defeating Burn, Zelda tells him that when she and Link stand together, nobody can beat them. Then Link and Zelda have another moment where they awkwardly stare at each other, so long that it gives Burn enough time to escape. Also, when Zelda regains her body in the final boss fight, she falls directly on top of Link and gives him a full embrace, causing Link to blush again. Once they successfully eradicate Maladus, Zelda stands there looking down as if she doesn't know what to do. Link notices and starts to walk over to her, possibly to comfort her. As Angie is ascending into the heavens with Burn and the other Locomos, she asks Zelda to watch over the land and tells Link that he must help her, as if they were destined to be together. Then Link and Zelda watch as the balls of light representing the spirits of the Locomos ascend. As they're watching, Link and Zelda are gazing at the sky, then both of them reach for each other's hands, and then they just stand there holding hands and gazing at the sky as the camera fades out. If all of this isn't enough, I have one more piece of evidence to justify this ship. Right before Link and Zelda leave the train's cabin to go chase after Cole and Maladis at the end of the game, Zelda asks Link what he will do once the whole ordeal is over. Link can respond by saying he'll remain a train engineer or become a warrior for New Hyrule. Link's decision in the game modifies the post credit scene ever so slightly. In this scene, Zelda is shown signing papers at her desk while looking at an illustration of their adventures. 
probably made by Old Man Nico. She then gets distracted from a sound coming from her window. If Link said he'd remain an engineer, Zelda will hear the horn from Link's train driving by and she'll wave to him from her window. If he chose to become a warrior, Zelda will hear swords clashing from the training yard outside. She'll go to the window to watch as we hear Link yell followed by a loud crashing sound. Based on this we can assume she distracted Link while training and caused him to fall. Either of these endings is solid proof that Link and Zelda remained very close after the events of the game, and possibly became much more than friends. Which ship from each of these games is your favorite? If I missed a character you feel should have been included, you can share that down in the comments below. If you enjoyed, please take a second to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Zelda content. Thank you for watching, Zelda out.